Well, folks, we got a lot of new information to go over for Echoes of Wisdom. We're going to put uh, some timestamps down below. So what you're going to see uh, at first is going to be the look at a brand new character in the game that we had not previously seen. Then you're going to see me going over all the brand new official art and screenshots that came off of the official Zelda X account. And then our final section might be the most interesting one because we have a massive update to the map of Echoes of Wisdom with all new areas and all new stuff going on. I really hope you guys are excited for this. It took a little bit to put this information together, but you know me, we got to stay on top of all things Echoes of Wisdom. And if you want to make sure that you are always up to date on every minute detail on this game, be sure to subscribe to the channel and drop a like on this video. Also down in the comments below and let me know, what are you thinking about Echoes of Wisdom right now? Is it tickling your fancy? Is it still not what you want? Are you still upset that, hey, we're not out, out there swinging a sword, even though the ESRB said we'll be able to do it a little bit with Link himself. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of this new stuff, starting with this new piece of official art. Now, there's been official art going around, this one you're seeing on screen, since the game was revealed, but the Japanese website got updated after the trailer drop with an updated version of this official art that is more zoomed out, and it's revealing three different things. Now, one of those is a snake enemy, which we had seen already in the new trailer. The other is a wanted poster. These are both on the right side, which we've also previously seen in the trailers. However, there is an additional new character in the top left corner that's apparently using a glider or parachute. Looks more like a parachute in this case. And there are no details on this character, and he hasn't been seen in any of the trailers or screenshots or additional video clips yet. Maybe this is like a person who delivers mail and they do it via Sky somehow. Uh, maybe it's just some kid having fun. Maybe it's a really important character since they happen to be in the official art. I don't know, but uh, I'm really excited to see who this character is and their importance to the game uh, because that's just really awesome. Now, look, we got to take some time here and get into a lot of screenshots and official art. So these all come off the official Zelda account. They're posting new stuff every day. So, hey, look, we'll probably have another video tomorrow updating you with the latest. So let's go with this stuff. And first is a side shot of the Elden Volcano from the trailer. It shows the uh, shimmering slash blur effect in full action, just like it was in Link's Awakening. The Link's Awakening was usually at the bottom of the screen, but this one's off to the left and up top. It looks like it naturally applies itself to objects at a certain distance from the camera. This may or may not save a bit on game performance to not have to load in assets at full resolution until you're closer. We then see in the background what I believe to be a torch slug, and then the enemy closest to us on the wall is probably called a mini Moldorn. Keep in mind, these could be new forms of old enemies or just new altogether, as we haven't been given official names by Nintendo yet. Keep that in mind for pretty much all the enemies I bring up here, because technically they haven't mostly been named in the game yet. Uh, so we can only cross compare right now to known enemies from the past games. Next, we have a screenshot of Kakariko Village. Nothing of note here since we don't know the names of any of the characters as they all appear to be new, though there is a mouse-like or actually maybe that's a cat-like creature. Probably a cat. I don't know. It's on top of the wood stack at the top left. Notably, the blur slash shimmer effect is at the bottom of the screenshot this time, which is how it is in Link's Awakening. The weird thing is that part is actually closest to the camera compared to the last screenshot. Interesting style choices with that effect, depending entirely on a camera angle. Next, we have a screenshot presumably right outside Goron City with Zelda about to talk to one of the Gorons that we don't have a name for, unfortunately. The next screenshot is showing up a lava area with some dungeon-style progression and a slew of rifts. Next, we focus in on the business scrub, where we get to focus on the smoothie making. First is some glorious new official art. I really love the art direction in this game. It may be a copy of Link's Awakening Remakes, but being applied this new way to new characters and races is just a total vibe. Next, we see the same shot in the trailer where you can get a smoothie made near the Elden Volcano area. And the next screenshot is just a result of a smoothie being made. But I will say, I love that the smoothie has like a three-layer base design based on what ingredients you're using. And that there's this nice little fruit wedge on top. It just takes me back to being on vacation when I was on a cruise. It's, it's just a nice little touch. Uh, speaking of the Deku, they dropped an amazing official art of some of the Deku scrubs. Three of them in particular. I'm sure they all have names or something. But, you know, we don't know them at this point. 
Now, next we get a screenshot of the Farron Wetlands. Pretty interesting, right out of the trailer. Next is a new angle on a different spot in the Farron Wetlands where we see the piranha enemy that we already know based on the footage that we can make echoes of in the right side of your screen. Next, we're seeing the Deku Scrubs eating the spider web cotton candy. And I just got to say, I'm trying to wrap my mind around a spider silk tasting like candy. <sighs> But they are characters based on trees, I suppose. So I guess I don't really understand what they think is sweet. Uh, this next one here is just Zelda talking to one of the Deku scrubs, as seen from the trailer. I do wonder if that purple pumpkin towards the top right is a collectible that we can make smoothies out of. Because there's definitely some way to collect ingredients, right? Now, next time we get a look at the Jabul water area of the game. Outside of the water trees and some pretty good-looking water for the art style, we do see a Tektite enemy coming back. I wonder if we'll get to echo them, too. Next, we see the River Zora Village, who unfortunately we don't have a name for that village yet, unless it's just called River Zora Village. There are some musical instruments towards the bottom left corner, and I wonder if we'll get to play them. And actually, there's another one next to the top left hut. This seems to be a place that likes music, so I'm sure it'll play a role as music has in past Zelda games. There's also a chest hidden under the deeper water segment below the waterfall on the right. Next, we see a screenshot inside the Sea Zora Village. Is it Zora's Domain, as it's often called? Who knows? But you see a shop with two different potions you can buy and some sort of leaf. Then, we see the famous scene that all of us are curious about, where the leaders of both Zora tribes are having an argument. We actually saw a small piece of this argument during the recent trailer, where we learned the leader slash king of the River Zora, the larger character on the left, is named Drad. Then we get to the Gerudo Desert area where Zelda's not looking too good. Clearly the heat is getting to her. Of course, she does find her way to Gerudo Town, where as a female, she'll be able to walk right in as opposed to prior Zelda games playing as Link. I'm not sure what the enemy or animal is on the bottom left, it, it, although it could be another mouse or cat. Just another look at Zelda here using the Moblin Echo to attack beetles. Yes, that's what those enemies are called. They've actually been in prior Zelda games, such as Link's Awakening, but also the Oracle games. Next, we see Zelda taking a nap at the Oasis from the trailer. Naps on the bed is a way to recover hearts. Yes, if you didn't know, we actually have a little bit of footage of that as seen here. Yeah, you recover hearts. Pretty neat. Next, we see another overlooking Hyrule screenshot. This is probably an early game cutscene similar to what happened at the beginning of Breath of the Wild. Next up is a close-up look at the entrance to Hyrule Castle. Nothing really too notable here. It's just a nice looking scene. Uh, last is a clean look at a fountain in the center of Hyrule Castle. We still don't know the name of any of the three characters shown on screen, but hey, it's still pretty interesting. Now, we have to move on to something that's maybe the biggest part of this besides the new character reveal, and that is the detailed map update. So in the past, uh, we just had this to kind of look at. This is what we covered a couple days ago, and it's pretty fascinating, and we overlaid a map on it, and that's cool. But here's the thing, thanks to an image provided on X by Vindy Bell, we have a much more detailed map to share with you, so credit to them, link down in the description. So just look at this. As you see, we have the names of several locations along with a lot more of the map shown off. Lon Lon Ranch is back, as is the Lost Woods based on the Japanese website. What I find most interesting is the labeling of Mount Hebra. This wasn't shown in any of the given imagery in terms of trying to figure out the name. And as the map notes, in A Link to the Past, this was the former position of Death Mountain, which has been replaced seemingly by the Elden Volcano region. Though it would be interesting if we had the Elden Volcano and Death Mountain, as they're both volcanoes, in the exact same world. That would be pretty crazy, but that doesn't seem to be what they're doing here. They're going with Mount Hebra. Uh, you can see a few contradictions, but it's strictly due to localization. As an example, Southorn Village and Southorn Beach are just known as Southern Village and Southern Beach in Japanese. Though I do think I prefer Southorn. It adds a bit more character. Uh, you know, merely just denoting a cardinal location as a name to me isn't that exciting. So they could just said Southern like it does in Japanese, but I kind of like Southorn 
a lot. Uh, it also appears the Gerudo Desert is located at the bottom left of the map, with the old only to the past area of the map shot uh, being the prairie, if you look down at the bottom center area. This is all fascinating, and technically, if Nintendo shows enough gameplay, it could be possible that we'll have the entire map uncovered before the game releases. Of course, the map itself doesn't really give us the same level of detail as actually just visiting the locations, but I suppose that's the point of a map, right? It's just enough information for you to navigate. Zelda fans are truly great at this level of detective work, so pretty awesome that we have this, and the more screenshots we get and the more footage we get, I'm telling you, we'll probably have almost the entire map revealed. Now, when I say almost the entire map, we're just talking about the map of, like, the actual, like, overworld. Obviously, when you go into locations, uh, when you're going in, that's obviously an entirely different map. Like, you're in a dungeon, you're in a town, you know, those are usually different maps. Or uh, any town that's, like, in a mountain anyways, right? Or, obviously, in the rifts. We don't have any, like, maps of, like, what rifts are what and, and and how that all fits together so even if we end up getting the full overworld map it's not really the only maps that matter in the game i don't know i think it's pretty fascinating and when i say get the full overworld map i should say if zelda fans piece the whole damn thing together because that appears to be what we're doing here uh one last time here's a look at that map it looks really really good uh i want to thank all you guys for tuning in you guys can tune in right here for all the latest on echoes of wisdom we're going to stay on top of this stuff as best as we can also guys i'll let you know we have a podcast tonight at 8 p.m central where we'll have an open discussion on all things echoes of wisdom plus more Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next video.